Hi everyone, it's Kelly with Women For One, and today I am honored to be speaking with Alicia Marie, founder and managing director of People Biz Inc. First and foremost, Alicia is my business and personal coach and has been for the past several years and truly has been the guiding force for me personally to create Women for One and evolve it over the years. I can't say enough about uh, Alicia's skill set. Um, she is the founder and managing director, as I said, of People Biz. Uh, she's become a leader in the field of coaching and training and has designed many custom training programs for hundreds and thousands of business owners in a variety of industries across the country. And she has many years of experience working with coaching managers, presidents, sales professionals, and has so many incredible programs through People Biz Inc. I am just so honored to be speaking with her and um, talking to her about how she got to where she is and her philosophy on life. So welcome, Alicia. And why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself, even though I've just talked about you. I'd love to hear a little bit more about your company and what People Biz does. Hi, my name is Alicia Marie. <laughs> I am the founder and managing director of People Biz. People Biz is a training, coaching and training organization um, that provides all types of programs for both personal and professional growth. Our purpose is to engage the client in the capacity to really grow and develop themselves. We're leading the change from new thinking, unprecedented results, and innovative leadership. I invite you to come to our website, www.peoplebizinc.com, and find what's right for you. So, I'm particularly excited um, to interview you, obviously, because you were such a, the impetus of helping me come up with this. So this is, I've been excited about this one a lot because of, you know, our experience together and our relationship. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, well, that leads us to the first question. That's perfect. So um, uh, I would say f uh, there's two. It's a two-part question or a three-part, and you can answer any or all. But how do you define the word authenticity in your life? And um, when are you at your most authentic? I would define the word authenticity. As a, when, I, when I am present to the stripping away of everything that I am not, I'm not my personality, I'm not my behavior, I'm not my history, I'm not a girl from Texas, mm -hmm. I'm not 48 years old, I'm not a mother, I'm not a coach, I'm not a trainer, I'm not a speaker, I'm not a woman, I'm not any of those things. Mm -hmm. And when I'm not any of those things, I'm being authentic. Okay. Can you talk a little bit more? Because that's, even, I'm trying to grasp what that means. So just kind of when you strip those away. When you take away, when you realize you're not your thoughts or your body or the roles you play in life mm -hmm. or your emotions or your personality or the story to you tell yourself what's left. Right. And... When I am present to that and expressing that in the world, I'm being authentic. So the first word that comes up when you say that to me is witness. So are you the witness of that? And yes. so Sometimes. That's the time. I mean, really when I'm there, you don't really know the self. Or in other words, it feels like there's an absence of self because you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're so um, not present to the personality. Mm -hmm. So it almost feels as if you're not there at all. Okay. It's, you know, when you go into meditation, that's for me, that's what happens. I get... It happens just, when I'm training and coaching. And, and I'm lucky enough that it happens all day long every day. <laughs> that's wonderful. That's yeah. what, I feel that way when I'm really in the groove about Women for One and it's not about me. I feel yeah. authentic. Um, okay, that's great. Uh, and then who would be your model of authenticity if you had to select a few people? It's easier to answer who would be my model. Um, I don't know who would be my model of authenticity. I don't think that any of us are 100% authentic. Right. 
100 percent of the time. I don't even think we get there 50 percent of the time. Um, and you know, I I can say that I've um, that I've personally, but personally, been present to so many people who get access to that. That that's really how I learned it. Um, so I learned it from you know dozens of coaches, trainers, mentors, even clients, right? I mean, of, of course, yes. But actually, more my mentors, coaches, trainers, like watching them be willing to let all of that go for the sake of something larger, okay. and actually seeing it occur. I also have noticed that it happens a lot with people who are dying. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because I used to work with a terminal. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, when people come face to face with that, something transforms. And they get, they get real. And then people used to ask me, Alicia, how do you go and do that every week? Go see with people who are dying. And I used to think, man, these are the realest people on earth. They are. I completely they, agree. They know that the designer clothes don't matter and the money doesn't matter. And, like, all they care about is what they're leaving what their legacy is here on this earth and how their family is going to do or, or the relationships, whatever that is for them. Right, right. That's, yeah, I completely agree. And that's, it's a really good point because I've, you know, worked with a lot of dying people and it's, mm -hmm. it hits me hard when you say that because it's absolutely mm -hmm. true. Um, Okay, thank you for that. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about your history and how it relates to you serving the world? And that is a very large question, but I'm doing that because... Yeah, what do you want to know specifically? I actually want to know about if you, whatever comes up for you when I ask you this, the struggles that got you to where you are today in your professional life or in your personal life. Something that just kind of comes up in your intuition when I ask you that, that's up for you. I don't typically tell my story. Okay. Because I don't think it matters, and I actually don't think it, it has anything to do with who I am. I'm not one of those people who believes that the past, you are the sum total of your past. I actually think you're the sum total of the vision or the possibility that you see for yourself. Because you're either going to be given each day by, you know, um, some history, you know, and, then, and then, then your entire thought process is about more, better, different, more, better, different, trying to recreate the past. Gotcha. Or you're just going to be given by some vision or future of yourself. So I'm not interested in telling my story. I'm not interested in telling the story because it has nothing to do with who I am. Um, and but I could tell you, like, you know, how I got into my profession. Um, um, when you say you're not, let's go there. Cause when you say you're not interested in telling your story. Okay. So our website is not about telling our story, defining ourselves by that and staying right, there. Right. It's about actually having the story come out of your subconscious. Those, those words and those stories you tell yourself in your head all the time, releasing that. And as you've coached me moving into that place of manifesting a new future, not being your story, being that witness you just spoke about being that place where it's separate from you. So I don't believe I agree with you. We aren't our stories. So it's almost like, um, ironic that I'm asking women to share their stories when I don't believe that they have any power. I think the actual act of releasing them and moving into that manifestation place that you've taught me how to do is that, the beautiful that, place. Yes, but Kevin, that's why I don't tell it. Right. If, if you really want something to, if you want to retire a conversation that you have going on in your head or in your life, mm -hmm. stop talking about it. Mm -hmm. You'll never hear me say I'm a cancer survivor. Right. Right. Ever, except for just now. It's because, that it, 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 you know, why perpetuate that? So, I mean, I could tell you about my history, my profession. Right. Um, you know, like how I got here, and it's, you know, it's pretty eclectic as most people who are, do what I do. Right. Um, that if you want that. Well, I, I don't want anything. I just kind of wanted to have this conversation where, I mean, that's a really interesting uh, way of thinking things and um, you know what just occurred to me is a lot of people come to me wanting to find their calling or their purpose uh -huh. um, and let's all 
always so obvious to me is what it is, and so not obvious to them. Yes. Um, and um, it's your talent. It's your gift. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I, rem- I remember I was first introduced to coaching in 1990 by Tony Robbins. I. I met him and he needed someone to start coaching after his seminars. And mm-hmm. so I did that for a short time while I was selling real estate. And that's why I learned what coaching was as distinct from training. Right. Like in, in coaching, I'm not the expert as a trainer I am. Right. I didn't want to become a trainer. And while I was becoming a trainer with my much education, I always had a coach. Mm-hmm. Hired my first coach for myself as a business coach in 1995. I've had coaches ever since. Um, and you know, did my work with um, CTRC and got a lot of training around grief counseling and psychology. This is all while running my real estate businesses. And I was also an athlete after I got well in 95. And in 98, I started a program called HealthWorks. Mm-hmm. And I still lead that program today. And it's because people kept coming to me. How do you have all these children? How do you stay fit? How do you run all these businesses? How do you speak on the weekends? And how are you managing all of this while you're still, like, you're fit and you're healthy and you're all of these things? Right. And I would take them to the gym and I would take them to the grocery store and I would take them to go buy, buy vitamins. And I even had a company walk that I did every Saturday morning for people. None of it mattered. None of it made a difference. There was no impact. And I realized, and this is after I have been being coached for several years, that these people didn't need training. They needed coaching. They need to get at what was at the behind the pizza at midnight. So right, to speak. right. What was really going on that they were um, creating all this protection around themselves or ill all the time or whatever it was. And um, and so that was the first coaching program that I developed. And I discovered because of that and because I wrote the training program for people who lead workers for the terminally ill. From those two things, I discovered I could write. Okay. And, and then... I, you know, I started coaching people from a kitchen table while running my businesses, etc. In 2000, I met a group of business consultants who taught me all about that world, and they used to use me to go in and design training programs from the outcome backwards, and then I would lead them. So I would like, what outcome do you want it to be, and then I would write the program. Right. And that was what had me sell my real estate businesses and start my company, and I started it as a training company. It took about a year for me to recognize that, that um, you know, we all went to the seminar where it was really, really great and then you did nothing. Mm-hmm. And so the, the, <laughs> reten- the retention was t- like 22%, like who was actually implementing anything they learned in the courses, and I, that was not okay with me. And so I started selling coaching to go along with the training, and then my company turned on its head, and it became more of a coaching company. So I went out and got certified and got all kinds of training around language and coaching. And that's kind of what got me here today. Wow. That's, that's great. You've done a lot. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I've done hundreds of programs since, both coaching and training programs. Okay, well, and another question when you were talking about how you do have a talent for seeing people's future vision and what their life's purpose is. Um, yeah. I, I actually... I wanted to go to next from that. Well, it was interesting that you asked that because one of my questions was, what's your fu- future vision for your life's purpose in the world at large? I'll keep doing what I'm doing. I don't know how that looks in terms of career. That's what people get too hung up. They get too hung up on the expression of what there is for them, the vehicle for their expression versus the expression themselves. Mm-hmm. They think that they have to have the career in which they can fully express what it is they want to express in the world, or they think they have to have the relationship or just the right circumstances. And the truth is, we were born with it. We've always been doing it. It pulls at us each and every day, whatever our unique expression or purpose is. And it has nothing to do with what you do for a living. If you were to take this business away from me right now today, I would, it doesn't matter if I was waiting tables or cutting bars, selling real estate or whatever the hell I was doing, I would still be doing this. Mm-hmm. Which is having conversations with people that leave them, like, leave an indelible mark on, on what's possible for them. And I see it. It's so obvious when I start talking to someone what their purpose is. But it's because they get so hung up on the vehicle of expression. They think that it has to be expressed only in my writing or expressed only in right. my career, whatever it is. And it's nonsense. And that goes to, I can name about 10 books that have come out in the last decade, which are nonsense because of that reason. It leads us down 
down some bunny trail. Mm-hmm. You know, there's and it leads us down this place. You know, where there's there's nothing there. Well, when you talk about that, that's a really good point because, of course, I applied it to myself right away when you were saying that. So when you you know are so clear when you get to talking to somebody and you really see you can see what their gift is what they're like right how do you allow them like for example you worked with me and you know you probably had an idea of what more of my gift was but we were working on the expression of the gift and I was like focused on tunnel vision writing and you were like Kelly this is a movement this is (laughs) <laughs> you know, there's so much more here. And now I'm in this place because you've helped me with my perception, expand my vision and allow for the movement to happen and get out of the way and be the vehicle for the movement instead of I want to write and I want to do a book. And, and, you know, I've been following my intuition, Alicia, and it's very interesting. I keep hearing no for a book for now. I hear that'll come later. And so, you know, you've coached me into that place where I'm following my intuition and it is manifesting. And I'd love to know what goes on for you that you're so good at that. (laughs) I listen. Uh I listen and it's what you listen for. So if you ignore how, if you ignore the how, see people get stuck in how. Okay. Right, if you ignore the how and you just pay attention to who someone is, what their qualities, what their gifts, what their talents, what their passion, what their, what it is that they're wanting to express, if you just pay attention to that and continue to reflect that back and dig and dig and dig with someone, they'll figure it out. Okay. Ignore, ignore the how and you ignore the story. And that's where most of us, you know, we think we're serving someone when we listen to their dramas or their stories, but actually we're doing them a huge disservice. Okay. So with what you're saying about the stories, let's get clear just for the interview. I want to be clear on, do you, I mean, do you agree with what I'm doing with women for one with these stories or do you feel like it's doing women a disservice? Um, I don't agree or not agree. I'm completely aligned with you. Right. I'm Um, trying to dig deeper. I do think that, I mean, we're all, my vision for coaching and the coaching industry and for the world is that someday we won't have to pay someone a whole lot of money to listen to us, guess who we are, and, and help us move to whatever that next action is. Mm. That we, we, our culture shifts so much that we truly start listening to each other. Mm. And uh, everything that ever gets created gets created because someone really listens while someone else really expressed what they wanted to create. So it doesn't matter if it comes out in a story form. It's still an expression of what wants to be created, but someone has to be listening for the beginning of that creation to happen, and the beginning was the word. Okay. That's and so okay. the word is, is remarkably creative. Language is creative. Everything got created through language, and it is the beginning of the creation process. And if, so if people have not been able to just simply be heard, they, they get stuck. Right. So in that case, what you're doing is giving, is, is offering this place where people can be heard. It has a lot less to do with the story and more about I was gotten. Mm-hmm. There are people going around starving. And they're not starving for what we think they're starving for. They're starving to be heard. To be heard and witnessed. But what about the people that are being heard and sitting in their victimhood and recycling their stories like at, at a therapist's office? And I would suggest they're not really being heard. They're not really being heard. Because really being witnessed and heard and reflected upon, and I know you do it, and that's why I feel safe with you, is your very direct back. You know, you will, you will reflect it back in a way that it's like gets me to a place of authenticity, of witness, of being feeling really heard, even if it's not what I want to hear. <laughs> Instead of this collusion of pretending you're listening and hearing and just speaking to a wall and recycling in that place. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. Most of us don't listen. And uh, yeah, I, 
I agree. And I think doing, for me personally, doing these interviews has allowed me to really start witnessing and listening to others instead of, do you know what I'm saying? Like I'm really trying to hear their words and hear their energy behind what they're saying. It's the first time. I mean, it's a great practice for me personally. Uh Uh-huh. Um, and I just had that experience yesterday. So it's interesting that you're talking about this today because I was like, wow, I'm really learning a lot (laughs) about listening when I'm doing these interviews, really listening to what people are saying. So that's a, that's a really good point, Alicia. Thank you for that. Um, okay. Uh, I have this question. It's kind of random, but I I really want to ask is when are you personally your softest? When are you just... When am I, when at, am I my softest? Yeah, just at your softest, at your most vulnerable. Yeah, it feel like two different questions to me. Okay. Um, I relate both of those those words together. Uh, from, when, I'm my, when I'm my softest is when um, I'm feeling a deep compassion for someone else and what they're going through. Mm-hmm. And that's... And that's when I'm my softest. Right. Um, when I'm, I'm my most vulnerable is when I'm um, uh, in front of a room um, talking about the unspeakables hmm. and sharing myself from there. So there are a lot of unspeakables, a lot of things we don't talk about. We don't talk about sex, we don't talk about dating, we don't truly talk about that. Um, we don't talk about money. But not in a way that can make a difference. And so when I am talking about one of the unspeakables and really bearing my soul around that, sharing from my own experience, that's when I'm the most vulnerable. Because I'm, I'm doing it in a world where there's no, in a world or in a culture where there's no agreement for that. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. So you're vulnerable and you become the most vulnerable when you do that. Okay. Is there any specific project you're working on that you want to share that's new and exciting for women that we can share? Um, well, a, ho- a couple things. Um, I've written the HealthWorks program, and it's it's remarkable. The program, bottom line, is it's a holistic health program where people walk away with a monkey off their bat- back. I mean, so many people have been attacking themselves around their body and their diet and um their own well-being for so long. Yep. <laughs> and, they, and they've done everything. They've done Weight Watchers and they've and had their got the personal trainer and they don't eat gluten and they do all of these things and nothing matters. And the reason none of it matters is because it's all so externally directed. In the Health Works program, people truly learn how to fill their own needs mm-hmm. um, absent of what's out there in the world. See, literally, it's what you need is affection. You learn to give that to yourself. Mm-hmm. And what you need is energy. You learn what energizes you. So people learn how to fill their own needs and walk away from the, the course and it's eight months completely unburdened. Wow. That's, that's a and different that's angle. Feeling at home in their own skin. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and people, yes, people lose weight and people do all kinds of things that occur from that. But, you know, Eating and exercise, moving your body, um, when it's just simply aligned with your vision for yourself or who you want to become, is very different than doing it to look good. Or, do you see what I'm saying? Yes. And, it, it, and so that is the big shift. We heal people internally and then other things show up externally. It manifests externally whatever you're healing internally. It's right. a, it's and that's a, led by my health coach, Jen Barrett. Right, because Heidi's going to meet with her this week and do that video. Uh-huh. That's exciting. Oh, that sounds great. Um, and then the last question is, what is one piece of wisdom that you would most like to share with our community? Or a piece of advice or thoughts? Any few sentences or whatever you want to say? Yes, I, I want to remind everyone that um, for me, I have three sons mm-hmm. and two grandsons. And that our... Um, the revolution and the change and the transformation that we're going through across the planet as women will free our men. Hmm. How, how will it? There's, they're just 
if not more stuck in cultural roles and in ways that they think that they should be. They're trapped mm-hmm. in that. And it has even less, in some cases, room to be themselves. And by, by all of us starting to claim our, our real power and our real authenticity and our true purpose and express that in the world, then they will be free. We can stop looking to them to rescue us. We can stop um, seeing ourselves as victims of them. We can stop um, thinking that someone out there is going to fix something in here, and I'm pointing to my heart, and that will free the men. So it's not just our transformation. It's the world. This is, mm-hmm. this is a humane and human effort. Right. It's the world's transformation for women. And when you say the revolution and the transformation that's happening for women, what are you saying? What are you talking about? Well, it's happening across the world. I mean, women are rising as leaders um, at an extremely accelerated pace. All of a sudden, we're more educated. We hold more leadership positions. Right. Um, we're speaking up in areas where we didn't, you know, um, in every area, in every career, every country women are stepping up and filling roles and doing things that they weren't doing just 20 years ago yes we're standing on the shoulders of the work that my mother for example who fought for the equal rights amendment you know and i think but then for a while since and um and now we're coming we're coming back and we're taking this now the next level right and it will free all people Mm-hmm. I, I, I absolutely agree with you. It's a, it's a great piece of advice and just, just words of wisdom. And Alicia, thank you so much for your time for this. I really appreciate this. I'm so honored to have worked with you and have you get me to where I am right now. And you're an incredible coach. Thank you, Alicia. I hope you have a great day. I'll talk to you next week. Thanks. Okay. Bye.